Well, guys, uh, I've got to send the link over to Jonathan because apparently he doesn't have it. Let's see, where is the link? No, stay. Um, hold on a second. I'm sorry, we're starting straight up from the other one without taking even a breather. So I'm going to get on here, send the link over to Jonathan, and he will be back with us. Uh, do we have anybody with us right now? We've got one viewer. That's not very encouraging. I hope more people come. Uh, invite guests. Copy. Jonathan, Jonathan. Sorry to keep you waiting like this. Not that anybody's waiting. I think uh, maybe the one viewer is me. But... <laughs> For whoever wants to join us after this to work through Wine Green, it's going to be a lot of fun. And But maybe those who don't join will be able to watch the link online, so it's okay. Uh, Jonathan, right now there's nobody here, it's just the two of us. Well, there are two people here, in fact. Hey, Adele. You and me, isn't it? Yep. Ah, good. Okay, so the so, viewers do not want us. So Woohoo! Jason, I need a link to the new spreadsheet that you made for new exercise two. Did you make one for exercise two? Yeah, of course. I sent it okay. to your email. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let me look. Yep. It says you're an editor. Mm. When you did you? No, I don't. Hang on. So you sent one and two? I sent all of them. Here, I'm sending Whoa, oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see, I see them. I see them all. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm sharing the, the screen so you guys can see as we get started. Adele, welcome back to us. Adele and Colton, it's so good to see you. I'm glad you guys are here. We are going to go over. Um, can you see the text there it is now that clear we, yep. we are going to go over exercise two from wine greens uh practical grammar for classical hebrew oops i'm trying to get that over here f11 i got a new keyboard too long a little while ago and it uh, gives me pain because i can't see things on it getting too old Adele, right, so that should the book used to be on Logos because I have it, but they may have taken it off. But yeah, no, it's called Time and the Biblical Hebrew Verb. Um, wow, if they took that off, I'm going to be so disappointed because I got to all the time. Uh, he also gives a rundown of like the academic history of the argument and, and whatever. It's such a fantastic book. That's a, that's a bother if it's not there. I think you've uh, read so we more are, of it than I have. <laughs> but. Well, we should read it together. We'll read it again. Okay. Um, so we are exercise two in Wine Green. Does everybody have a copy of Wine Green? Or? Sorry, pre-order. Oh. It shouldn't, mm -hmm. unless it's a, maybe there's a new edition that's coming out. Maybe that's why they took it out. Um, I haven't heard. I haven't asked. But if it's on pre-order, it must they be a new edition. They update automatically us who have who purchased it, right? If you purchase it, yeah. Hmm. If you have previously purchased it, purchased it, I think it does. Well, that would be lovely. Mm -hmm. Just lovely. I would love any uh, updates or changes. So basically what we're doing now, uh, this follows up our Joshua series that, we're, that we've just started. We are meeting to go over Wine Green's exercises to have a reminder of grammar. Because everybody needs a reminder of grammar. We are not talking through the descriptions in the book. We're just doing the translations. So anybody who wants to actually learn from the grammar is welcome to download a copy of his book from archive.org uh, to borrow. You can borrow it uh, as long as you need and, um, and work through it. And we're here to help with the answers. And if you have questions from the grammar, we can deal with them. But... Uh, we're not going to be opening the grammar and actually going through it because that is monotony and boredom. <laughs> and we're trying to avoid that. 
All right. Uh, I think I'm going to take the names off the screen. I don't think we need them. I think everybody knows that uh, you're you and I'm me. And it just takes up uh, space on our faces. So here we go. Uh, Jonathan, you want to get started? Shall I? Sure, I'll do it. So remember, uh, when the first time you push space, it makes a capital letter. And you have to push right, the control. Uh, right. Z. Right. So we have Melech. Melech means king. Or and a king, we have, maybe. Or a king. Yep. And then we have Le Melech, which means two or four a king. And notice there's no lengthening. Um, so it's just the standard indefinite article. Then Mi Melech, which is from a king, right? With the assimilated noon in the second. This is actually Min Melech, but you have a consonant cluster, as Jason loves. Consonant clusters, the noon assimilates, so it becomes Mi Melech. Then you have ha melech, which everybody should know is a definite article. You've got the hey and the patach and the dagish in the following letter. The king. Then you've got la melech, which you have the lamed. So instead of le melech, which we had before, which is two or four a king, this is lamed plus the definite article. So the lamed takes the vowel of the definite article ha, and you have la melech. So this is two or four, the king. Can't type today. Good, goodness gracious. And then my screen, I need to go back to, I'll just maximize it. Do we have another one? Yeah, we have min ha melech. We have a uh, visible men with a makaf. So, yeah, so from the king. Very nice. Somewhat simple. Any questions? Hello? You can't hear me? All that time I, I was talking. Not. Yeah, I could. Um, at the top of the screen, there's this button that says fit. It's like 100%, whatever. Just click fit, and it makes it bigger for you. You can see it more easily. Oh, yeah. Hope well, I'm reading, off of, I'm reading off of my own computer and keeping the StreamYard in a window beside it. Yeah. So, yeah. Hope you don't mind me cleaning it up a little bit, just so it's no, of uh, course sharp. Not. Jason is OCD 18. about formatting for a king and so just like it says over there a comma it doesn't say uh we just match um let's see come on i thought i disconnected From for a second there a king the king two for the king good from the king okay all right i like to match if there's a semicolon there's a semicolon there's a comma there's a comma because i'm a weird right like that. right okay right. so we're gonna say a um, man, a person. I'm going to say a person. No, the, the, there's a semicolon over there. I know, but yeah, there's commas and everywhere else. Yeah. No, because they, they are separating with the semicolon between what is melech and what is ha melech. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice that before. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yep. So this one is like or as um, a man or a person. I like another person. I'm going to say a person. Uh, then we've got the man or the person, ha-adam, ha-adam, marked with meteg because uh, it's distant, not reduced. The man or the person, I like person. Um, ka-adam, like the person or as the person, man. And min ha-adam, from the person, from the man. Good. And then we have... Ha hechal, ba hechal, and min ha hechal. So the temple. Ba hechal, the bet preposition is taking the vowel of the definite article. So in 
the temple, and min hahechal from the temple. Pretty straightforward. Just to capitalize that word, crazy thing. Hachoshech, <laughs> lachoshech, kachoshech. So the darkness, the darkness. Um, two or four, the darkness, and light. Where is the darkness? Um, so notice it, that all of the yeah. patach in the beginning of the word is the definite article. If it were not definite, it would be le, lechoshech. But we have ka choshech, la yeah. choshech, that's definite. So, so all of the attached prepositions can take the uh, the definite vowel of the definite article to make it definite. Except for min. Min is different. Right? Yep. Cool. All right, so now we have afar, dust. May afar. So this is a different construction from what we've seen before. This is not, rather than having mean plus a makaif, this is mean plus a dagish. Maybe I should write this. Rather than uh, mean, uh, it would be he afar, I think. Mm -hmm. We have the noon assimilates. But we can't have a dogish in the hay, right? So it's may afar with compensatory lengthening. But you're hmm, you're doing two things. The first right. is definite mean he afar, and the second is indefinite may afar from dust. From the dust may ha afar. Yeah, may ha afar. May ha afar. Yep. yep. Afar, thank you for catching that. So you can either have the min attached or unattached. And if it's attached, the dune assimilates and the vowel lengthens, right? So if that doesn't make sense, let us know and Jason can explain it better. <laughs> so dust from dust, not from the dust, as Jason pointed out, because there's no article there. Just the lengthening. So from dust, afar, remember, is the weird since the uh, they didn't want to say ha, ha, a, ah, so they changed the, the hay to a different vowel. <laughs> Did you correct the uh, my capitalization? Oh, thank you. Semicolon. Dust from dust and then be'afar in dust this is uh i think jason correct me if i'm wrong this is a bet preposition which is lengthened under the influence of the iron no it's the article oh. is it oh yeah that's right be like, afar. Be afar, be afar. thank you so in the dust and from the dust. But you didn't translate the dust. Yeah, sorry. Okay, cool. The dust in the dust from the dust. Okay. Uh, next, Elohim, Ke Elohim, Me Elohim, Ha Elohim, Ka Elohim, Min Ha Elohim. Mm, all the different Elohim. ways you can say the same thing. <laughs> Let's keep all of these as uh, God. Okay. The next one is like God, ke Elohim. Notice it would be ke Elohim, ke Elohim that is joined together. Uh, the Aleph becomes quiescent. Ke Elohim, ke Elohim. Uh, from God, me Elohim, from God. Uh, me colon. That's wouldn't shouldn't be that God. also be wait? Do, hmm? Shouldn't that also be Melohim? I did we have the wrong time? It's a preposition, so it should be Melohim, shouldn't it? No, me Elohim. Oh, I didn't know that the men behave differently. Yeah, this is why okay. when you have uh, attached to like uh, Adonai Elohim, okay, let's say Adonai, like Elohim Adonai, this one. If you have me in front of it, it's going to be pointed as me with. Uh, 
method and then schwa because schwa is a part of it like this you see the pointing yeah the pointing of um Adunai uh, uh, of uh, Yud Hevave in this situation is different. It has the the uh, the Shva under the Yod. This also influenced what happened with uh, Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two, verse so six. So you're saying this is because of the influence of the divine name, even though it's not the divine name here. No, I'm saying that the divine name is pointed with the Shva because this is pointed with Shva. In this case, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, you see it like this with two shvas side by side and kamats. Uh, this, I actually, I think I'll do a short sometime and I'll explain this because this is this is from the Aleppo Codex. Yeah, I know. The never Leningrad Codex that. is different. Yeah, I thought all um, attached prepositions did the quiescent aleph on Elohim. Well, let me tell you, that pointing in that verse gets uh, Nehemiah Gordon really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense why. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Gan, yes, it's different because the mem has the dagesh forte after it. That's uh, that's exactly why, because it would be min Elohim, and the nun wants to assimilate into the following consonant. But in the case of Aleph, it can't, so it goes to compensatory lengthening, and that uh, makes it stay as me, and it doesn't uh, go me. -e. It's not two segles together that. Uh, Smash together. Fantastic. So the God, uh, like the God, and from the God. Notice that the God happens in Hebrew, Ha'elohim, much in the same way that it happens in Greek with Ho Theos. Oops, Ho Theos, and we can't judge it. Like, um, we don't have to say always the God, even though the article is there. It just means God most of the time. Um, Gandalf, I'm really sorry about the time on YouTube. Um, I need to check these things because I just uh, I just did a reformat of all the times, like rearranging everything. I put it all on the calendar on the website, and I may have forgotten to update the uh, the links through Streamyard. So that's that's probably my my fault. I'm really sorry. It's even, I mean it's definitely my fault because I'm the only one that does it. But, uh, even Jason Hare makes mistakes. Holy crap! That's the first time, first mistakes. time I've ever heard you make admit you did something wrong. Holy crap! Sometimes, monumental. Sometimes I even I even point words incorrectly in Hebrew. Can you imagine? No, <laughs> doesn't happen very. Doesn't often. happen very often. <laughs> <laughs> More often with but me it than it does with you. <laughs> Oh, look what you got. I want that one. <laughs> oh. What did I get? Oh, yeah. The Tetragrammaton. Well, we were just talking. Why don't you take this one? You take it. This is your thing. Well, I mean, I, I'm Go. just going to say Yudhe Vavhe and to Yudhe Vavhe. This is and from Yudhe Vavhe. Uh, YHWH is often used in academic writings to represent the fact that this is a name. This is not a title, and we should not say the Lord, because it's not the Lord, it's God's name. Um, but it's normally pointed with the vowels of Adonai. So if we wanted to go with the regular transcription, it would be like this with Meteg here. And may Adonai also having the Shva and Meteg. This is the regular pointing that you will find in the text of the Bible. They didn't point it here because I think academics are going away from pointing the name uh, to just leaving it unpointed most of the time. They the have text, been doing uh, that for at least 20 years. Yep. And um, also because you can't really predict the pointing of the name because perhaps it should be pronounced as Elohim and not as Adonai, and then the vowels change. So... <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I, I would I would go with the same pointing if I wanted to be uh, uh, clear. Oops, can I go over here? Have... I would point I would point the name as just the same points as Arye, a lion. At the same points, if you By want to way, know how I would point the name. We both reserve the right to change Wine Green if he's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah. So this is fine. So next one, we have Adama, which does not mean earth. It means ground. Then Ka Adama. It, it can also mean dirt. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, it can. It can. Uh, oh, my gosh. Okay, got it. Ground. Ka Adama. So like the ground. Is it the? Uh, yeah, I see. Ka Adama. Is it the? Wait. No, you're right. It's not. It's just like ground. So what's going on here is that you have the vowel. Again, as Jason was talking about earlier, you have an echo vowel. You have no lengthening under the olive here, right? So you know there's no definite article there. Thanks for pointing that out, Jason. Yeah. Every time Jason asks a question like that, I know I'm wrong. So <laughs> I think that's the, the habit with anyone. You ask a question when you want somebody to correct themselves. Right. Otherwise, so, I would just say, wow, Jonathan, good job. <laughs> like ground, which is what you were prepared to say, and then I got it wrong. Uh, and then ha and adama. Gan has uh, stated that the word adama can also refer to soil. Like if you're using soil correct. to plant your... Your plants, it's called other miles. Yes, and also Eretz can mean the same thing. But you wouldn't buy Eretz. You don't buy Eretz to right, plant right. Your, right, right. your flowers. Yep. You buy Adama. Right, but it can refer to the soil sometimes. Um, ka Adama, so we did that. And then Ha Adama, so here we do have the compensatory lengthening. And we have the definite article. The olive can't take the doggish. So the vowel lengthens. So we have the ground. And then ka, whoops, then ka adama. So here now we have it compensatorily lengthening because of the olive. What do you, what? Oh, you're speeding up. I'm just throwing up. together the next one. You're speeding up. Because it's, so, we're going slowly. Yeah, we are. So then... Uh, definitely the definite article. See what I did there? Definitely the definite mm. article because of the compensatory lengthening. So like ground. It could also be as the ground, according to the ground, but according to the ground is weird. That probably doesn't happen. Yep. All right. All right. The next Shmuel, Li Shmuel, Ki Shmuel, Mi Shmuel. This is uh, Samuel, to Samuel, like Samuel, and from Samuel. We should just uh, comment that the Dagesh exists in that sheen on the word min from mi shmuel min shmuel that's the only uh, different one um the next one if we were to see it in the bible would probably start with vaikra yep. not kava and this is one of the instances uh, where where weingren does not agree with our word order philosophy so he's operating under the antiquated in my opinion antiquated verb subject object syntax structure um, in order for it to be uh, verb first you would have to have vayikra elohim so this is one of the one of the ways where i said that we reserve the right to correct lambden we did not do that here not so lambden wine green wine green sorry yep but lambden also Yep. Uh, number also. eleven. If, as we're moving forward, well, wait, eleven well, says. Hmm? Did we did we explain it? Uh, uh, sorry. Verb verb subject. So he called. Who called? God called. And when it names in Hebrew, when you name something, you name to the something. So God God called to the light. So he called the light day, and to the darkness, or the darkness, Karalila. He called night. Notice this little accent here on the first syllable, Lila. Not on the second syllable like it usually is. Okay, go, Jason. Yeah, um, and that's influenced because of two words that surround it. This is is uh, stressed uh, on the penult, and this is also stressed on the penult, and this word just being in the middle of it moves the accent over. Normally, kara. But in this case, Velachoshech Kara Laila. It's uh, like she says, Nasagahor, it went, it uh, retreated backwards. 
it re the accent retreated. It's a recessive accent in this case. Um, Pen bloody tastic. Good, good. Um, I do see now that uh, kangaroo court. Yes, the the words in Hebrew just do whatever they want. <laughs> they break the rules. Uh, yeah, it's true sometimes. Um, I do see that we started really early according to what was written, uh, but that's okay. Um, so number 11, Halach ha'am b'choshech v'lo ra'or. Halach ha'am b'choshech v'lo ra'or. Um, so this is, uh, we're going to say really v'yelech or v'yelech. Yeah. V'yelech ha'am b'choshech v'lo ra'or. The people were walking. The people walked in darkness. The people, Keep and notice Torah. that the Hmm? Sorry, Hebrew Torah says can't have two accents back to back, and yeah, that is the Nasoga horror principle. Mm -hmm. So the accent retreats. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry for interrupting. Halach ha'am, the people walked or went. Bachoshech in the darkness or in darkness. You don't need the in English. And. He saw, why halach and ra'ah? He saw, even though people is plural in English, because people here means like a nation of people, the people group. We could translate this as nation. So that would help us with uh, translating the last. So the nation walked in darkness and it saw, did not see, it saw no light. It did not see a light. We could say the people... To avoid the, the plural problem, the people walked in darkness and without repeating the subject, did not see light. That helps out. Um, this is called a, a uh, it's not compound. It is if the subject has multiple people inside of it and it's singular, family. What do you call that? A uh, collective singular. Collective, collective. Yes. Okay. So am is collective. It's um, it's a singular word, but it's referring to many people. So sometimes am will take a plural verb to go with it, and this is constructio ad sensum. <laughs> are you are uh, you ready? Official thing without going over any of them. Okay, yeah. so. Uh, Natan Shumuel Melech La'am. Samuel gave a king to the people. And this is a strange construction because usually we would see an et here. Et no. ha Melech. No, no, no. So if no. it were if it were definite, et is the definite direct object marker. So since it's right, but it's not definite, so this is perfectly natural. Natan right. le Melech. He gave them a king. Gave it doesn't a matter. King to the people. Yep. Yep. Shmuel Nathan Melech Laam. Yep. Or Shmuel Nathan have, Laam Melech would probably yep. be better. And here we have Laam. Again, you have uh, the definite article, which the ion would, would you would expect the next letter to take a dogish, but since it's a guttural, the vowel, the patach lengthen, lengthens to a kamatz. So there you have that. Clear All right, the next one, 13. Min hashamayim, min hashamayim ra'a Adonai. Min hashamayim ra'a Adonai. This does not say, but it's the Lord saw from heaven. If we wanted to say he saw the Lord, hu ra'a et Adonai, hu ra'a et Adonai, we don't have that. Min hashamayim, from the sky, from heaven, Ra'a Adonai, the Lord, or yud he vav he saw. The Lord saw. Adonai saw. What did he see? He saw the suffering, suffering of his people. Uh, Exodus chapter 1. Right, That they were in servitude in Egypt. He saw their suffering. Min hashamayim ra'a Adonai et sivlotam. Oops. Number 14, you don't need to keep going. Uh, I did the Samuel thing just to save okay. time and like uh, try to All be right, so 14. one after the next. Baralohim Adam. So again, the classical understanding, the classic understanding 
is verb, subject, object. So he created. Then next you have your subject. So who created? God created. Adam. A man or man. Uh, yeah, a man or man. You could do both of those, either of those. Or um, mankind. Or yeah, mankind. It could be humanity. Yep. Mankind. Humanity. Humanity. From dust. So here again, you have the mean preposition, which is attached. So the noon assimilates with a doggish, but Hyen can't take a doggish. So the heric lengthens from dust and a woman no article there so it's and a woman uh mean ha'adam from the man again you have the patak lengthening to a kamats because a guttural can't take a doggish yep and doggish. we often see that once you've started translating a verb and you've made a translational choice like you when you're actually translating you can't write god created Parentheses a man, parentheses kind, slash human. You can't put that in a translation. No. So you not. make a choice. You make a translational choice. And let's say that this says, Vayivraluhim Adam. Like, uh, and you're like, okay, so what does it mean? That God created a human being? He, yeah, or is it specifically God, a male? That's like what it's God a says, man? A human being. But you made the decision and you said, okay, I'm going to say God created mankind from the dust, which is perfectly fine. God created mankind if Adam is... HEC makes you say humankind because mankind is uh, gender discriminatory. Okay, so. well, you get, <laughs> then you get to the next phrase and it says, V'isha min Adam. V'isha min Adam. And that... Yeah forces you to go back in your translation and correct it because you can't once you get to that phrase and a woman from the man it has to be referring to a specific man so then you go back to the beginning of your translation you say god created a man from dust and a woman from the man because the, once you've got that last phrase it makes you go back and correct the translational decision that you made earlier on and sometimes you see that in the, uh, it doesn't have to be Adam because min ha Adam would be from the man and uh, Adam as a proper name um, would not have the definite article generally. That's my, uh, my opinion. Okay, right. number 15, Correct. Amal. Would, I think mm, that's right. 15, Amal Shmuel El Hayam, Ha'am, Lo Hayam, Hayam is the sea. Um, the people, Baha Melech El Ha'ir. Do not translate as Adam. I wouldn't. I would translate as an, an, a man, from that. and a man and the man. So uh, this would actually say Vayomer Shmuel El Ha'am. Uh, it's Samuel Amar. He said to or unto. We like the El is unto. El Ha'am to the people. You can, you, can, you can stick with the 1611 English if you want. That's up to you. I like, I like it. <laughs> Samuel said unto the people, the king has come to the city, or unto the city, where the king is coming. The ba can either be preposition, uh, uh, particle, participle, he's coming, or the uh, kal, perfect, he came. So the king is coming or has come. It, it would be uh, determined by the context. Is coming unto the city. So prepare yourselves and uh, be ready to receive his royal highness. I'm just making an illustration here. Uh, okay, so once we get there, I'll explain that. So, Karalohim Lishmoel Balila. And again, you would expect Le Shmuel, but Hebrew doesn't like for you to have two consecutive Shavas. So, the first vowel will lengthen. Lishmuel. So, God called to Samuel Balila in the night, or during the night, you could say, during the night. I think that's appropriate. 
Yes, Jason. Good. Can uh, I get to uh, But the bar I love would be at at night or in the night, and this is a night. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't know why. Probably I, I don't know because that called because he yeah. because he haven't hasn't introduced the object marker yet at this point in the textbook. Would be my guess. I delete all the ugly space. So we, if we wanted to be literal, we would say in a night. Whoops. In a night at night, but it, it's not. It's not at normal. Like that. Balayla, Balayla is normal at yep. night. Balayla. Yep. Yep. Natan Elohim, Natan Elohim, Isha la Adam. Natan Elohim, Isha la Adam. Vayiten, Vayiten Elohim, Vayiten, Vayiten Elohim, Isha la Adam, la Adam. God has given or God gave God has given a woman or a wife to the man when you're married Isha means wife or woman but it means wife in the context of marriage uh, the word for husband can either be Ish Ish the Isha or Baal Baal the Isha mm -hmm. And then we have Adonai Melech Bashamayim, which is fairly simple, except this is the first time in the exercises that we have seen a implied copula or a to be verb, which is the most common verbal construction in Hebrew. So sometimes if you don't have a verb, you can just supply it. So it could either be, I guess I should put it could either be is or was, but we know that Yahweh is always king in the heavens, so yep. And if it were past tense, it would probably say Vay. And of course we have the bait taking the def the vowel of the definite article. We have a dogish in the sheen, so we know that this is definite in the heavens. Yep, or in the sky. Mm -hmm. is in the heavens or the sky. Halach Hamelech El Ha Halach Amelech Litzavayelech Amelech Halva Laila. The king, Amelech Allah, the king went. Amelech Allah El to or unto the palace, uh, right? Unless it's talking about specifically gods, Echal, then it would be the temple, but it's probably the palace. The king went to the palace at night, in the night, at night. Of You're course, welcome. Hebrew to our 101. You're welcome. It is nice to. Uh, you, there's so much stuff online that uh, people like. They don't know Hebrew, and they're they think they're teaching Hebrew, and it's very frustrating. Um, so we want to increase the amount of Hebrew out there that actually like looks at the rules of the language and adheres to it, <laughs> and we want to put out some. Some good material and help people actually learn Hebrew, and not uh, not do weird things that other people are doing. I don't know. I think okay. it's important. I love this language. I I want everyone to know it, even my mother. This is v a very strange sentence. Um, I don't think this sentence is very helpful. But we have Natan, a call, or somebody called it a paal, and that's a that's something you could call it. So a call verb, so he gave, who gave? Elohim gave, God gave. There's no definite direct object marker, no et. So a light, or I guess you could still say light. Mm -hmm. A light la adam to the man. The la isha and to the woman, and both of those Adam and Isha have the attached article with a Laman preposition, which lengthens because both of them are preceded proceeded by an olive. True that. Uh, yep. See, if I didn't have to correct you, then I would just say that's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to try to be more careful. <laughs> yeah. So, lo, um, uh, so Nathan Elohim. Uh, of course, Nathan, we would change the word order. Elohim, Nathan, O, La Adam, La Sha. If it were unmarked. Mm. If it were unmarked. Yeah, if it's unmarked. Yeah. yeah. 
לא אמר המלך לשמואל דבר, לא אמר המלך לשמואל דבר, או המלך לא אמר לשמואל דבר, if we change the word order, המלך, the king, לא אמר, did not say לשמואל דבר, he didn't say a word to him, he didn't, he said nothing to him. This is actually a good cookie in word order, because if it's preceded by a negative, it would flip. Sometimes. Um, so when you say Amar plus Davar, he said a word and it's negative, lo, uh, you can either say he didn't say a word, he didn't say a thing, or you can say he said nothing. He said nothing. No thing is also lo Davar, not thing, no thing. So the king, you could say the king, said nothing to Samuel, or the king didn't say a word or a thing. He didn't say a thing to Samuel. He didn't say a word to him. He, he said nothing to him. Can be translated any of these ways. It's not pseudo information. Come to my session on word order, which is un, un No, no, no. He's He's oh. not saying that you're you're talking pseudo information. He's saying, I assume that it's a he. I don't know. I'm sorry. Maybe it's a she. Could be. I apologize. But uh, this person is saying that they learned uh, Hebrew grammar and all of the uh, the minutia of it while studying in a, in a Karaite uh, situation, oh, and me. that it's better like this to actually go over the real grammar and stuff and not. Spread pseudo information like like it's happening all over the internet, where people are claiming all these weird things. Yes, okay, like HebrewChristians.org. Do not go there. I mean, well, I'm the sure they have some good information, the but grammar uh, explanations generally... are okay. But like the hidden meaning stuff is yeah. not. Um, right. So it's uh, yours, number twenty-two. Yeah. We're almost finished with this. Then we'll yep. go into the English to Hebrew on Patreon. Well, yeah, in so, thirty know. minutes, right? Because I need to eat dinner. Um, You're welcome to have a break. So, Karashmuelel Adonai, and this is, according to our philosophy, bad Hebrew word order, but he called, who called? Samuel called. Samuel called to Adonai. Okay, easy enough, right? Let's make it uh, so that it's like every other name. Uh, well. Big first letter. To I be mean, consistent. I've seen it. Yeah, that. Well, I'm consistent. You're just not consistent with me. But anyway. Well, <laughs> if you had small caps, then it would be fine. But these. Oh, you nitpicky son of a gun! All right. I am aesthetic in how I present things. Yes. All right. Uh, great. So, Kara Shmuel, we would say probably Shmuel Kara El Adonai. Um, I think that uh, it could or also la, be la Adonai. Ba Adonai. Or la Adonai. Yep. Lo natan Adonai or la'am. Lo natan Adonai or la'am. The lo, when you see lo, you shake your head. Lo natan Adonai or la'am. And you would have to ask why, but uh, I don't know. So, Lord, you'd have of hey, did not give light to the people. But uh, why would God not give people light? I know, know that's that. kind of depressing, actually. So, uh, Halach Shmuel, who walked? He walked? Who walked? Samuel walked. Ba'ir. And again, we have the B, the Bet, which is taking the vowel of the definite article, and it lengthens because of the ayin. So, to mm -hmm. the city. In in the city. I'm in, sorry, in, in the city. Ba'ir. Yep. Um, to be absolutely clear, the difference between uh, walking and going, if you want to be clear that you're walking, uh, that walk in English, you would say beregel, 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 by foot. Alachil mm. sham beregel, I went there by foot. That means I walked there, I walked there, if you want to be explicit. Ra'a Adonai bishmuel rosh la'am. Ra'a Adonai bishmuel rosh la'am. We would say, uh, 
אדוני ראה בשמואל ראש לעם. Meaning, אדוני saw in Samuel, like when he looks at Samuel and he thinks of who he is and what, he saw in him a leader, a head for the people. Like uh, God saw him, saw Samuel as a, as a leader for the people. That's why he made him a prophet. Um, so that will be it for today, unless there are uh, questions. Colton, it was great to see you here. Hope to see you next yes. time. Thank you, everyone. This is where I bill you all of you. This is so good. I appreciate having folks who care to do it the right way and who are engaged in scholarship. I have good people around me, just not grammar nerds. Well, now you have good people and grammar nerds. Because we're both. Yes. <laughs> uh, I noticed when I rewatched the videos from last week that I'm kind of stoic. That I, I'm really a happy person, but... <laughs> <laughs> On here, I'm just like very quiet Jason, and subdued. You're, you're a really happy person, but you hate people, so that makes it difficult sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, so on the website, I've published all of the uh, – Colton, we'll see you next time. It's really nice to have you again. Yes, thank you, uh, everyone. I posted on the website, like I said, that uh, we have uh, a schedule of what's going to be going on with our lessons, and I will keep it updated. And I'm sorry to have stepped on the time today and started early. We're going to take a bit of a break. Um, we'll probably start in about 40 minutes. Anyone who wants to join us on Patreon, uh, I will post the link on Patreon. And the yes. Patreon link is patreon.com slash the Hebrew Cafe. And, and I'll post the link on there for everyone to come and watch. Good, good parting word from Gandalf. Great for me to get a sense of overly simplistic rules versus the range of potential meanings. Grammar is always more fun when you don't have to memorize all the rules to go with it. <laughs> right? I think I, oh, yeah. I said in our first session, I think uh, whenever we started this live streaming thing, that whenever I did Hebrew for the first year, this book right there, C-O, C -O, uh, when I finished my first year of Hebrew, I never wanted to look at Hebrew again. I hated it because I hated the hifil and the hitpa'el and the pi'el. And I just, it was so much information that I wanted just never to look at another uh, Hebrew word. When we started our second year of Hebrew, by chance I ran into the professor while I was buying books. And he said, are you coming to Hebrew uh, second year? And I said, no. <laughs> and he says, I really think you should. You did well. And I said, what do you mean well? I hated it. And he says, no, no, you did well. You need to come to second year. Once we got into second year, we translated the Joseph story. We translated the book of Hosea. We looked at all kinds of transcriptional Hebrew. Probably and at joked. that point, I said, no. I said, I said, at that point, I said, you know, I love this language. I just love you it. You did that second year, all that? Second year. Second Dang. year we did we did the Joseph right. story, we did the book of Hosea, we did the Mesha Stele and the Hezekiah Tunnel inscription. I didn't want to and do that. Take me off. Why Jason. did I disappear? I need to, I need to go. So ah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so now I love Hebrew and it's wonderful and you will enjoy it as long as you read texts and don't uh, focus on Minusha. Bye, Jonathan. We'll see you at four o'clock. That is in uh, forty minutes. Bye, guys. I'll put the link on on uh, Patreon. I'm going to take him off and just read what we've got here before we go. Indeed, this is the this is from Deuteronomy. You know, uh, I believe because um, I'm starting to teach Deuteronomy in another uh, another course with Adele that's uh, been here with us. And uh, this is very familiar. This is the commandment and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded you or commanded uh, to teach you to do in the land which you are crossing over there to inherit it. Um, the Deuteronomy and Joshua are so tightly connected. Uh, it's really nice to see them together. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. Jonathan had to run. Um, I really hope that people will sign up on Patreon and start to support us a little bit because we need it. Uh, the war in Israel is not easy uh, on us financially because everything is shut down. 
I work in a hotel and we don't have guests and it's not a good thing. I've lost a lot of money. So please come help me. It's nice to see you guys. We'll see you next time. If you're not on Patreon, it's fine. But uh, if you can come and, and help us, it would be wonderful. Um, next time we are meeting on Monday next week for Joshua at 5 o'clock p.m. in Eastern Time. And this session, Wine Green, at 6.30. So we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Am Yisrael Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. The people of Israel, may they live. They do live. Chai v'kayan. Bye-bye.